Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for um, joining us today. I'm Paula Honeypet of Warrior Wellness Fitness Studio. And we have a very special guest today. This is Jennifer Bakalu. She is our life coach for Warrior Wellness. And we thought it would be interesting and fun just to get to know her. And we wanted to share some of her, her thoughts on things. So Jennifer, tell me a little bit about your credentials. Hi, um, I am a certified life, life coach, but all my life I've been a teacher and I've worked in retail and mostly in management. Um, working retail, I've had to coach people. So basically I had to sit with them and figure out what the goals were with the company and how the company fits the goal, company's goal fit with their personal goals. And if there was any way as a manager, I could help them or um, sometimes it was just sitting down and listening to people. I mean, we have human beings that work for us. Sometimes um, my team members will come to work feeling a bit depressed or feeling like, you know, one thing in life is falling apart while they're trying to put another thing together. And I always found myself ending up, um, at the time I thought I was just talking to them and advising them, but really I found myself coaching them. And through all that, I started thinking about, man, this could be cool if I could do this for life. Because a lot of people were like, man, have you ever thought of becoming a motivational speaker? Because you're so good at it. And I was like, oh, maybe. And when I became a Zumba teacher, a lot of my clients will stay after the class just to talk. And we talk about everything and nothing. And I'll just throw ideas there and they'll come back and be like, oh my goodness, that thing you told me to do, it worked. It totally worked. So I was like, hmm. Yes, and I will have to say, you know, just before we even jumped on here, I was like, I need a life coach. So can I have a quick session? Um, because even though I always seem like I have it together, that's not always the case. I'm still human, <laughs> like she said. So, um, you know, sometimes you just need that person to talk to and to help you map out a plan of how you're going to change this or that, um, whether it's in relationships or in business or in, in life in general, you know, our spirituality. Um, she does handle a lot of that um, as well. She handles a lot of different variety of people. So um, now something that you did leave out that I think is interesting is tell them where you um, lived and taught Zumba. I actually lived in China for 18 months and I taught Zumba in China and it was so much fun. And a lot of my students, and I taught kids between three years old and 15 years old. And sometimes in class when they would just start losing interest or attention, I make them get up and we'll pick a funny song and do some steps and they get back to it and I get right back teaching. So it's that just, was it's a, Yeah, it's amazing to hear you talk about China. I love that because you've experienced life. It's not... You've not been confined in one little town or one little city. You've, you've experienced the world because you were actually born in France. Is that correct? I was, I was born in the Republic of Congo in Central Africa. And then I grew up in France. I was raised in France and traveled throughout Europe and then moved to the United States 21 years ago. Yeah, and uh, in yeah. between living here, I've gone different places, traveled in different places in the world and done Zumba in different parts of the world. So it's been a lot of fun. Yes, I, I wish I could um, experience things like that. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners are probably thinking, oh my gosh, I can't imagine, you know, growing up that way and as much as you've traveled and the different things that you have um, experienced and people that you have met. And because everywhere, everywhere, it could be just another town or another state. It's already different how people live. Yes. And I, I, I've loved it because I think the way that I've grown up has made me more tolerant toward people, especially people who are differently from me. And having learned from different culture has made it so much more interesting to be a life coach because I will not coach everybody from the subculture the, the same, but can you just imagine coaching people from different culture, people that speak different languages. I speak seven languages, learning language number eight and nine. So I, I just, I love what I do. I really enjoy it. Oh my gosh, I did not know that you spoke that many languages. So 
that that also opens up the fact that you can do life coaching for people that are in the US that do speak other languages and are more comfortable speaking their their native language, you know, and you can you can help them um, and by understanding, you know, understanding because it is it's different and um, something else that you have not mentioned is, and you know how I am about this, she always forgets to mention this. She is an author of a book, and I'm going to have her tell you about her book. My book um, comes from uh, a very painful time in my life. As uh, when I first graduated from college, I got a job where I was uh, an assistant manager at a big, big retail uh, company. And um, two months after I got hired, uh, we got a new district manager. And the one that came just, I mean, gave me a hard time because she did not believe that a 25 year old should make as much money as I was making. And it was such an awful, awful experience that about a year later, I ended up leaving the company. And all that I went through, when I say my self-esteem was run through the mud, but I never wanted to admit it because people have always seen me as a strong person, a very confident person. But my self-esteem was, I mean, a hundred below zero. And I had to learn to walk my way back to where I was and even past where I came from. And through those little steps, I had actually ended up writing a book and at first I was like, nobody's interested. And I kept hearing, you need to go ahead and publish this because this is, these are tools. It's a guidance that somebody else can benefit from. But I always felt like, eh, if I could not even keep a job like that, nobody wants to hear what I have to say. Nobody can benefit from my experience. It took me about five years to publish the book. I finished writing the book in 2013, and I did not publish it until 2019. The summer of 2019 is when I published my book. It's called Better Not Bitter, Allowing Mistakes to Refine Us, Not Define Us. Because so many times when something bad happens in our life, we hang on to that and we make that our identity instead of analyzing the steps that we've taken and what we could have done better and then use that as a stepping stone. Yes, and yeah. that book can be bought on um, Amazon. Mm -hmm. So Better, better Not Better by Jennifer Bacalou. And, um, and I'm telling you, I actually purchased it and read every bit of it and I think in one day. I could not put it down. So I recommend everybody check into that because it is a very helpful book. Um, and it reminds you of a lot of things that, like she said, you, you know, you just, you gotta let go of some of those past things. It's not who, it, it, it's, it's your past, but it doesn't define who you are today. You decide that. So, um, okay, so let's move on to how do you personally deal with stress? Oh, that is awesome question because I constantly feel stressed, but um, I love to dance. I love to dance and I love to write. Those are the two things that really have helped me face every, every and any adversity that I've ever faced in my life. I would write about it. And then when I'm done, I would just have a moment of silence and trying to get within my spirit. And if I hear a song in my spirit, that's like, this is what we need to play in order to get rid of all this. I will play that song and I will dance my life away. And sometimes it can be two, three, four hours later. I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, it's time for me to get to do other things. But dancing and writing, are really, I'll say the, the, the foundation of, my stress relief, the foundation of beating depression, the foundation of staying rooted and staying true to myself. Yes, and that was the next question I was going to ask you is, you know, how do, how do you recommend that people deal with, you know, stress and depression? Because right now in the world, we're, I mean, we're in a pandemic, no matter where you live, it's in the U.S. or outside of the U.S. Because I know that you have friends that are outside of that are going to see this and we're all in the same boat. We're all dealing with stress. We're all depressed. You know, I mean, we have our days. So, you know, how do you, you know, how would you recommend to a client to help you them to get past that? 
you know, and a good, a good tool, like you said, is dancing. It, re, it relieves those, um, it releases the, the good, yes, the good endorphins. And then also writing, journaling, um, reading the Bible, reading a book, you know, whatever makes, and I agree with you on that. It, that's what I, I've turned to reading this year. And, and I take time every day to read just a little bit of something that motivates me and doesn't stress me more. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, I would say find out because some people, I, I meet a lot of people that are like, I don't have a hobby. Everybody has a hobby, even if we do not see it as a hobby. There's something that you like to do, something that is precious to you, something that constantly draws you. And you'll be like, I find myself always doing this one thing. That is your weapon. That is your shield. That is your cave. So if you find yourself constantly painting, even if you don't consider that your hobby, that could be your escape. That could be the one activity that allows you to liberate your mind so your body can be free to do what it needs to do and protect you as a human being, protect you as a created living species. There is something that you don't always think about, but you're always drawn to that thing. That is your one thing. Hang on to that because God has created each one of us with talents. And sometimes we allow other people's words to, to break us down to the point where we lose ourselves. Go back, look inside of you. There is that one thing that constantly speaks to you. That is your one thing. You could use that, spend time in it. Because when you are in your element, nothing else matters and your mind is at peace, your subconscious gets regenerated. I love that. You just gave me chills. Like, and when you speak, you always have something um, positive and great to say that makes my mind do that. Um, where I, I listen to what you say and I think about it the rest of the day. So. I know our listeners are going to be the same way, um, and and you're right, and that's the best way to do it. Is I mean, and it, it takes it takes a little bit of willpower to make yourself do these things, but it's not that much, and then it just becomes a natural habit. Exactly. You know, every time you feel something fighting you, that's probably what you're supposed to do. And if you start with five minutes, sometimes we feel like, oh, even for prayer. And so many times people are like, oh, I got to pray. And they want to pray for an hour. Like you can talk to God in five minutes. God is just like talking to your best friend. You're not always on the phone with your best friend for hours sometimes, but not always. So if you want to talk to God or you want to just release, five minutes is enough. And you, you will see that that five minute becomes seven, 10, 12, 15, 20, an hour. We have to learn to do things in increments. And sometimes we get in trouble because we want to do everything with force for a long time, but small steps, small steps. Yes, and, and you're right. Um, I take um, five to 10 minutes every morning to sit in silence. Um, I call it my meditation because I sit in silence because all day long I'm talking and, and to people and doing things and talking myself. So, um, I, I sit there for five to 10 minutes in the morning and it's made a huge difference in how I react during the day to everything in life. And it's helped me to sit back and, and really just take control over the way and I react to feelings, I guess you could say. Absolutely. And I think sometimes we don't do enough self-reflection. Self-reflection is very important because it puts you in a position of power where you can start monitoring or noticing patterns healthy and unhealthy patterns. And when you start noting those and actually recording them, then you know what to start working on small step at a time, small steps at a time. So do not be afraid to make time to get to find out about you because we always wanna get to know everybody else, but we don't always wanna get to know us. And that's also important. And that self-reflection is also a form of prayer. We may not think about it, but prayer is communication to be able to relieve burden in our life. So whether you're communicating with God or communicating to yourself, God is still present with us everywhere and all the time. So when you're self-reflecting, 
it's a form of prayer. Yeah, that is correct. You are exactly right. It's, you know, and it's something that a lot of people, I don't think, I don't think they realize how easy it really is to do that, to sit there for five minutes by yourself and reflect on yourself, your self-reflection. And, and a lot of people, we run a hundred miles an hour and we do all this stuff, but we don't even take five minutes for ourselves. Yeah. You know, that it's crazy. And it's kind of like I tell my clients, you know, it's, it is small steps and it's, it's progress, not perfection. So you don't have to do three hour workouts and, you know, be perfect on your nutrition to see results. It's small steps that add up to those big things. So it's the same thing with the mind. Yes, absolutely. And you're right, Paula. It is. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, when it comes to resetting your mind, what do you feel is the best way to do that? I mean, what is a step you would say, the first step you should take? The first step that I should take, sorry. No, nope, they're calling you. I know, that's my mom, <laughs> sorry. Oh, <okay. laughs> hey, that's okay. <laughs> uh, the first step that I will say is finding out why you are where you are, resetting your mind. What happened? Why am I where I am? What's bothering me and how did I get here? And learning to let things go. Because so many times, especially when we feel like people have wronged us, we want to hold on to it and hold on to it and hold on to it and rehash it. I should have done this. I should have said this let go, let it go. Because what you are doing is adding burden on yourself and you are preventing the good things that are meant to come to you from coming. When we hold on to stress or we, we hold on to pain, we, we rob ourselves of the opportunity to receive peace. Let's say every day the mailman comes and puts mail, but you never take it out. Every day the mailman comes and puts your mail. And then you're like, man, I'm expecting this mail to come. But you have to get out of your house, go to the mailman, to the mailbox, get the mail out. And once you get it out, you are freeing room for more mail to come. You're like, well, I'm expecting this particular package. You go to the mail, you out there looking at the mail because we do this a lot. We get out of the house, we go to the mailbox, check out what's in the mailbox. This is not what I'm expecting. We shut the mailbox back out and we go back in the house and we complain about, I'm waiting for this particular level. <laughs> Our mailbox is so full, the mailman cannot add any more mail in there. Mm -hmm. But you're waiting for this one particular mail, this one particular thing that was supposed to be put into your mailbox, but there's no room in your mailbox. That's Empty correct. it out. I love it. I love it. You know, and and it took me, I actually have had that that phrase in my brain for six years now. Let it go. Let it go. And when I start to revert back, it pops right back up there like that. It's almost like a file that opens up in my, my brain and it says, let it go. Because you can't change it. Okay. You can only change the way you react to it is exactly. the way I always, you know, so I agree. What would you like to um, help your clients accomplish? What I want my clients to be able to accomplish is getting back to the true self. Um, because sometimes when we, we, we hit walls, we get to a wall, we're like, okay, how do I break this wall so I can get on the other side? I want them to know that you don't always have to break the whole wall. You can drill a hole big enough for you to get on the other side and keep moving. And I am the drill. Just take me with you. We'll make that hole big enough so you can get on the other side and we can keep moving till the next wall. We'll make a hole that you need to get out to the next side. You don't always have to break the whole wall because when you spend time trying to break the whole wall, you are wasting resources. You are wasting strength. You are wasting passion and motivation as well. 
I love that. That's a great analogy. And, and that's going to change the way I look at things now, you know, it's, it's kind of like you said, start small steps. And it's the same thing with that, you know, just making that one little, little bee hole, and then we'll just get ourselves through that. And then we'll move to the next. And, and I love that. That's great. And I know our clients that have, um, that you have had this year, they have, they've really enjoyed and um, benefited from being able to make their sessions with you. So um, I think that's great. What are your goals personally, Jennifer, for the next year? For well, this year, I have three particular goals, actually four particular goals that I'm working on. Um, I want to be able to help five clients by May achieve their goals. Five clients by May achieve their goals. And then we will move into the next goal. And by the end of this year, I want each one of those five clients to be able to document for their Christmas present. I want them to document the progress that they have made throughout this year, not jumping hoops, but taking small steps at a time. Second one, um, I will be publishing the planner to my first book, the book that I published about a year ago. And there will be a matching planner that goes with that. And I also have a children's book coming. It's a series. So we're going to have that. And the third one, I started a wellness um, company where I make handcrafted soaps handcrafted lotions, handcrafted uh, basically bath and body products for your enjoyment because that will be the boost to your mind being able to free itself. That will be a boost to your mind allowing your body to get the rest and the healing that it needs because our body sometimes have a hard time healing because our minds are constantly going. Because our minds are overwhelmed, our body is feeling the shock, so it cannot be liberated to actually enjoy the healing that it's supposed to foster so we can keep going. All of that is tied together. Oh my goodness, girl, you have a lot of amazing goals. These are huge goals that just one goal by itself is something that, I've, that some people have never even thought that they could ever reach. And I'm super proud of you, I know that, um, you know, I'm proud of you for the book that you've already written. So I'm ready to get my planner when it's ready. And then, um, and then um, the children's books, when you get the names, we'll have to post about that. And I know that they will, um, there's a lot of people that I know personally that will be excited to get those as well. So um, let's talk about one last thing. Yes. Tell me what, Je what is Jennifer like? What is her hobby? Jennifer's hobby, um, and I find my hobbies changing from season to season, depending on where my life is on each season, the hobby tends to change. While dancing and writing are still the main ones, this season, my hobby is discovering about myself, finding out where Jennifer is going, who she's been, who she is called to be, and what steps she needs to take to become that woman so she can invite better things into her life. And I, I really did not see it as a hobby until about a week ago when I was um, creating a worksheet that I really believe will benefit my clients as well. Um, I was just thinking, man, these are some really cool questions that I don't think we, 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 we spend time asking ourselves. You know, and small things like what is your hobby? I've met people who don't know what their hobby is. I've met people who don't even understand that question. So small things like that describe us and help us determine who we are in life. So right now my hobby is finding out who God created in this woman that wakes up every day, does 50 million things like, who are you lady? Who are you? Like, yes. what is your beauty? What does, what does your beauty contribute? Like, how does my beauty 
contribute to the beauty of the people I meet every day? And how does my talent contribute to the talent of the people I meet every day? That has become my new hobby. I love that because, you know, um, and everybody has different types of hobbies and people always ask me, you know, what my hobby is and mine is Pilates. Like I could do Pilates all day, every day. That's what makes me happy. And I think about it all the time. Like it's just always on my mind, but um, I also feel that there are, are things that are hobbies and our talents and um, they're God given gifts. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've seen a lot of people change other people's lives with their God given talents and their gifts. And I think that that is something that you definitely have. So, you know, I think Thank that, um, I think that a lot of the clients that you're going to be helping this year are going to be, um, they're going to have change. They're going to have their whole life changed because of it. They're going to learn those tools to, to go on and to find their true self and their, you know, what are they here for? And, and so many people are just lost in that. Mm -hmm. They're lost. They don't really know, you know, they know they're here for, to be a wife or a mother or, you know, a coworker or, you know, a, even a pastor or whatever, but what are they really as a human being? What are they inside? Right. You know, so I love that you said that, that that's perfect. Perfect. Um, do you have anything last that you would like to say to the audience before we go? I want to say with the previous year that we've had, this past year has been hard on every single one of us. It was not a joke. Uh, and I know right now all of us feel heavy. All of us feel like, oh my goodness, I, I just, I don't even know how I survived 2020. Um, but you survive because there is something that you were supposed to do. Not that those that did not survive did not have a plan or a, 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 a purpose to fulfill, but it's time for each one of us that are here to realize, especially those of us that have lost family members to COVID where we're like, this person should not have gone. I want you to make time for the next seven days to just think about what, what am I going to do with this opportunity that I've been given again? It's good to think about your goals, what you're gonna do. It's good to think about um, what you want to have, but we spend so little time thinking about who we are and who we want to become. I wanna be a wife, I wanna be a husband, I wanna be a millionaire. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what footprint do you want to live on this earth? Who are you? Not what do you do or what you have? Who are you? What is your character like? What is your essence like? Because each one of us has an essence. What is your essence? And if you need help discovering that, hit me up. I know, Jennifer, you are so right. And, and uh, we, all have, we all have a reason for still being here and for making it through such a horrible year, even you know, through the, the shortage of toilet paper and all of that. I mean, we made it through it. And you know what? We made it all work. We all worked around it. So, absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think it's important to realize, you know, just because we all have been put out of our comfort zone, mm -hmm. we made it work. You know, we, we're survivors, you know, we and did. we'll have a story to tell our grandkids and our great grandkids because, you know, uh, that it's, that's a story definitely to tell, you know, when you couldn't get toilet paper or you couldn't buy, you know, Lysol or, or whatever. And you went but, to the store, there was no milk, no bread, no eggs, and you just had to buy flour and sugar and make your own bread. That's back, right. It's kind of like back yeah. in 1940. Yeah, exactly. That's how it felt to everybody. This is like, oh my gosh, you know, but um, <laughs> Jennifer, I want to, I want to thank you for taking the time today to sit down and talk to me. I always enjoy it. So, um, and I think that, I think that you're going to be um, a, a definitely a huge asset to so many people your whole life, your whole life. So um, if you guys would like to know more about Jennifer, you can always go to our website. It's www.com warriorwellnessfitnessstudio.com 
and she's in there. And if you'd like to schedule a make appointment, just um, get some information or put your email in and I'll give you a call and get you set up with her. So I hope everybody has a great day and may you be blessed by this video today. Thank you for having me, Paula. And everyone, thank you very much for making time to listen to us.